Okay, Kevin, I think I'm set up here and I should be able to do a decent job of demonstrating everything on the sketch I did that is sort of like your drawing. Not exactly, because I just quick sketched it from looking at your piece on my computer. So what I'm going to start with is just showing you what this would look like. Um, let's see, if we started with charcoal. So I went ahead and set myself up with both um, the large charcoal and then I have a set of old charcoal pencils that I will go in with the details with. So let's start up in this section. I wasn't sure where you were going with this piece, but if we're going to, well, actually we're gonna have to start here. If you're going to say that this is the deepest area, um, let's consider that this would actually be, oops, I lost my image of your piece. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do this little section here. And what I'm going to do is it looks like you had it mostly blue. So let me get a lighter cup of charcoal. See, it's easy for me because I've got all these different color charcoals sitting around. We used to do charcoal portraits, but it looks like this. spiral is sort of blue. Now this is the problem with charcoal is it gets everywhere and then you've got to pick it up carefully and get rid of it but you can clean around it but that gives us sort of a um, a light blue spiral and it got thicker than probably I wanted, but if you use your pencils, you can see that you can get a lot more exact and you can you can see this see the tooth I was talking about, how the watercolor paper has tooth. I did not have mixed media paper here. I have it at the uh, school, unfortunately, in my drawer. All right, so there's there's a quick nebula. Then, um, what did I do with my black charcoal? Um, so if we are gonna have this the darkest area, then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna have to really smudge it in. And I would recommend you use these um, smudging sticks and that allows you to go in really dark and push it into the surface. And it's a good idea to maybe have a box, you know, a base of a box that catches all the dust as you blow it off. I don't have that here, but um, I would be smart to have it. And I just realized you actually had this spiraling up from, I'm gonna do it with this pencil, but it looks like this came up and around. So this would need to connect into here. And it's connecting with this piece, I think. So my nebula is off, off center, but at least um, it's sort of there. But this looks like it was kind of like this. And it can curve up like that. Um, so I want to sort of hook that up. All right, so you've got your black charcoal and you're gonna smear that in, really push it into the um, surface. And you're gonna have to work carefully. Pencils, the pencils actually get in I'm just trying to cover a lot of surface, so I'm using these thick charcoals 
just to get as much color down as I can. And then I could go back in with the pencils to refine around the edge. But this is just gonna show you how you can really, this is like drawing instead of painting. But um, there we go, we'll have our little nebula. Let's see how I can fill that in really nicely. I just wanna try, I know this is time consuming for you to watch, but I don't really know any other way to do it. My drawing students asked me not to do the time lapse because they really couldn't um, get a feel for how long something would take. So I'm just gonna draw it for you and you can try speeding it up if this is just too time consuming to watch. But I'm not going to do the whole piece, but I'm just going to give you kind of an idea of how this might work if you did it in charcoal. And then I'm going to come back in with some gouache and do something a little different. But see how you can blend that blue in so it looks like it's disappearing. You can come back in and add more of the blue, but it gives you a really, really nice subtle fade. Um, you're going to need different colored sticks to smudge the blue and the black because otherwise it's all going to smear. And I don't know where my smudging sticks are, so we're just going to have to work around it. Okay. And I can see that, that little area closed up, so I'm going to try to bring it back out without erasing. But I, you know, you can go in with an eraser and clean up as well, just like, um, like that. Um, bring this out a little bit more. Okay, so there are a couple ways you can think about doing your stars. Um, you can do little dots in advance and try to work around them. And that's what I would do is go sort of far around them because you can close in on it more easily than you can erase it back out, especially with black. So let's just work our way out to the stars. And this will give you an idea of what you can accomplish with the charcoals. So let's get enough down here that you can see the effect. And actually, I can come back into some of these areas where I have um, the tooth of the paper and I can add a little more yellow and you'd probably want to have a couple colors of yellow, but um, I've got chalks here. Oh, no, these, are these my watercolor pencils? Are these my chalks? These are my chalks. No, they're not. These are my chalks. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, you know, another thing you could do is you could use like a crayon or a Prismacolor pencil and put on a really, really thick layer. But you can see that this is actually um, closing up on that a little bit. So I'm, I'm losing this. It actually does show, so I can leave little, little star shape or little circles. I can have some white ones, but see how I'm getting some little stars now. And I can work around how I have the tooth and end up with something that looks a lot more like a sky with stars in it. Okay, so 
I'll just keep working through here and to get, give you a really good idea of how this would work. And then as you work out this way, you're gonna get lighter, but you wanna be real dark in this section. And you can come back in and add more of the black. So now this section, um, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this area here with charcoal and that'll give you an idea of, you know, just what the charcoal would do. And then I can do um, some gouache to show you what gouache will do. So we'll just do this little section here using charcoal. Without a whole lot of stars, um, you can add a few in here. But you can see that if I put the, the yellow in on top of the black, it's not going to show up as much as if you put it on the white, but you'll still get a little subtle star look. And, you know, this it's time consuming to go through and do it, but um, if you take your time, you can have a really, really cool looking sky. And there are tiny little erasers that you can get, and I don't think I have. No, I thought I had the erasers. They look like pencils though, and you can erase the dots out. I thought I had one here that I could use. Oh, here. Okay. So if I want to erase a little dot out, the thing is, is that you, you'd have to buy the really tiny ones, but see how that's bringing up a little star shape, or a circle really, not a star shape. But you can go back in and close it back up. Okay, I'm not gonna go too much into detail with it, but um, I just want to give you an idea of how you're going to fade this out as you come away from the space. And you can either smear it using a smudger and just work your way out so that it gets lighter and lighter or you can use a um, paper towel. Of course, that's gonna take up a lot more, but you just put your finger in your paper towel. It covers a lot more space, a lot faster. And you know, you're gonna get lighter out here. The only problem with using your finger is you're gonna lose some of the um, stars if you're not careful but you can see and this is a great thing is if you've got this sitting in a box you can actually go back in and lift up the dust that you've blown off of your drawing and use it to cover surface so there now you can see that it's actually starting to you know look like a fade into the space. Okay, now this was sort of a gray color, um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it with white first, just to make it lighter. And you can certainly use your, okay, I'm just staying with charcoal on this right-hand side. All right. Actually, I think it was like this. 
And the fingers are great too for, for smearing and rubbing in, they work. So. But this is where you definitely need your workable fixative to um, spray it as you're working. You would take it out, you'd clean it off, clean up the areas that you don't want any of the um, charcoal on, and you would take it outside. You do not ever spray fixative inside. Um, but you would, you know, you could spray it and set an area that you've worked on so that you don't smear it and you work in stages. And it's workable fixative, so you can keep working over it, but it holds the original layer. I mean, some will come up, but not too terribly much. Okay. See, and you want, you want to have a fade, which looks real because a star is brightest right in the center. So you're gonna work around that and fade it out. And then sky doesn't have to be completely black. And you know, you might actually come in with a blue as you work your way out into this area and make it a blue black and smear all that in together and you get a lot more variety and interest because you're creating sort of a color texture. So see there, now you can sort of see how if I add the blue, it's going to give it a little more reflection, like from the light of the earth or the light of the cosmos. Okay, so that gives you a little feel for how this would work. Um, I have a hard time stopping when I start something, but that's, that's charcoal. So that's one option that you have. Um, and uh, like I was saying, you can come back in after you've done this and you see, oh, I've got little white spots. I can fix those up and add some more white in there, or you can keep closing those back up. You know, and this would probably fade off. This would, this would have some dimension too. <coughs> so you might actually come back in and put some of the black into the center part and not have it all one color. Oh, whoops, I have to get some water. I'm starting to cough. Okay, sorry, I breathed in some chalk dust. <clears throat> that happens. <coughs> now, if we wanted to use, <coughs> um, let's see, if we wanted to use the <coughs> graphite pencil, uh, let's say down here, this is our graphite pencil. Oh, and we need to create this other nebula going up. I forgot what color you had it, um, <clears throat> but let's just keep it, um, let's just say it's white for now. And I'm gonna do it in charcoal because, actually I probably should have done it in watercolor pencil. I think I'll go back. And then do it in the watercolor pencils. Are these the watercolor pencils? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the watercolor pencil with this, but <clears throat> I'm going to need to sharpen it. Okay, so 
You can see that you can't see it, but I've now gone over this with a watercolor pencil because we're going to use the water soluble graphite now. Maybe I'll do that <clears throat> yellow just so you can see it and see what happens when I come in with the watercolor pencil. I, I just don't remember what color you had that. And then I think you had this connected to that. Um, so um, let's see, we're using the graphite. Graphite now, water soluble graphite. So let's get that covered in there. Oops, I went over that surface, but that's where gouache would probably come in nicely. Oh, whoops. I forgot this thing curves around here. All right, erase that back out. That's the nice thing about graphite is you can erase it. Okay, so you had this other thing sort of circling around here. All right, we're not going to worry about it too much. Um, let's see, that thing came like that, right? And probably, I think it actually came like this. So this would have been black. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to paint in the water-soluble graphite. And you can see how dark that gets. And the likelihood is that you're going to want to add either a white chalk into it, but look how dark that, that gets. It's, it's uh, pretty powerful. Um, you'd obviously need to use um, a um, thinner brush than I'm using. But there, that just gives you an idea of what you're going to get with the water-soluble graphite. And I'm moving, as you can see, I'm blending it right in with my charcoal. You know, and that's what happens with mixed media. You can keep, you can mix it all up. You can actually put water on charcoal. It, it create, it's not as consistent as the graphite, so it's not gonna be as um, smooth. But um, you can see you get this really beautiful effect with the, um, <clears throat> with how it blends. So, um, See how it, 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 it gets a little pickled um, when you start putting it into the charcoal, but I'm not working with a clean surface. I, I'm just doing this quickly for you. So, all right. <clears throat> I would recommend you take a lot more time and caution when you do it, but this will give you a basic idea of the different things that you can work with. Okay, so... That's using the water soluble charcoal and that would need to dry a bit. And I'm just realizing that this, I'm not honoring that one spiral very much, but now you can see I've got yellow mixed in with it because I'm in a hurry trying to show it to you, but you will take your time and figure out what you want to do. So, um, actually, I can clean up where I didn't carry this properly. And I actually think that the to use that water-soluble charcoal for your background, and you can keep blending it out, would be a really cool way to do it. Maybe not even... Well, I do like the charcoal in here, but to use the water-soluble graphite, I said charcoal, water-soluble graphite 
as you move out because it can be blended, but you can see it's got a very consistent gray. So you're going to want to come back in with either gouache or chalk and smear it in to your graphite. So this becomes very much mixed media as you do this. And you're gonna to have to be careful not to overwork your uh, paper so that you don't start lifting the paper and you wanna have it dry between. And if you don't, it's going to peel up. So let's go ahead and... Um, See, I've got some wet paper and I'm gonna make a mess if I'm not careful. All right, so now you've got the water-soluble graphite, you've got your charcoal, and now I'm gonna show you what would happen if you work with the um, gouache, okay? So let's see, do I have a brush I can work with? <clears throat> I had one here. Oh, here it is, I just didn't see it. Okay. So if I come in with gouache to fill in, it's cleaner than working with the pastels. The pastels are messy and the gouache is clean and you can blend it Nicely. Now, when it gets in with the graphite, let's see what happens. It's probably going to pick some of it up, which is kind of cool. And even having that, what, that was the watercolor pencil that I used. And that gets mixed in with the blue, and it's almost like it's got a glow, which is kind of cool. But you have to decide if you want that. And the other thing is, is I was going to thicken that slightly. And I do have a pencil line under there that's showing. Um, and so you have to decide if you want to erase that out when this is dry. But you can see how the watercolor pencil that I, I put down has got a lot of pigment in it. All right. Okay. And then, you know, this is kind of cool how it's spiraling into this black, um, And you can wet a watercolor pencil, dipping it in water and draw with it and you'll get more pigment down. But more than likely, you're gonna wanna use gouache to fill this back in. Uh-oh, I lost my spiral. Well, okay, so um, <clears throat> that's what you're gonna get with watercolor pencil, and then I'm gonna try to finish this up using gouache. And again, um, you're gonna you you're gonna go slower. And remember that nothing is all one color. You're gonna have some variation. It's something I was talking with Ariana about with her piece, with the water and the, the leaf, is that um, she needs to think about whether she wants it completely graphic, like it is right now, or if she wants to have depth and dimension. And I suggested she add some, <clears throat> some um, darker lines around the, world free, the word free to um, give it some emphasis. and dimension and weight. And that way on the one side of the word free, she would have darker blue and then the lighter blue at the top. So here you can see that we've got this. This is, the, this, is this thing. And I think that you had sort of a, a strong, we're just trying to hold the shape of this. And gouache if you add I'm adding blue and white together um, 
Um, and as this dries, you can go back over it and get a little bit thicker. Um, paint. So the white, see how I'm painting over that now? The one thing with gouache is that as it dries, it changes color. I actually kind of like painting over this yellow, so this thing is just sort of very faint and um, sort of drifting in there, but you can decide. I mean, you can add like a, you know, you can make it sort of like it's a, a lighter color in there where it's spiraling. And it would ha pick up the colors on either side because it's, I mean, you've got to decide if this is sitting on top, if it's going behind, how all this is working. So, um, you know, maybe you want to make that actually more orange. So you can come back in with gouache and redefine it. And gouache is just like watercolor, but it's got more pigment. And um, it's got a, a, I think it's got zinc ground into it, which is, and that's why you get this wonderful chalky tone with it. Okay, so um, let's finish up the blue that we were doing. I don't know if that was more white than blue, but, or maybe it was silvery gray. Whatever, you can you can figure that out. I'm sure I'm not sticking with the colors that you had in mind, but you know, we're just trying to cover the surface of the paper to begin with. And I wouldn't be afraid of mixing some of the, you know, if you have graphite there to let it blend in, you know, work it, work its way sort of into this. So it's not a division, but rather smoother. So this is all just experimenting. I'm, I'm just playing around. So, so say you get all that gouache down and you decide, well, I want it a little softer. You can do one of two things. You can add a bunch more white and work your way out. You can even work the white all the way in to the edge, but see how I've now added gouache on top of the graphite pencil and it washes right in there and it becomes really beautiful. It just creates this really, really nice, subtle gradation of color, okay? All right, so um, that's chalk, that's gouache. What else did I talk to you about? Um, Oh yeah, if you wanted to do, for instance, um, the alcohol ink, let's see, what do I have here? And you have a piece of, you could do a piece of um, frosted acetate, or you know, you can get this stuff to cover um, um, paintings. You can just pick it up like, you know, you can buy it actually pre-cut and it would fill in, but. So say you wanted to have, I'm trying to find it. Um, I think you had, that's purple. I'm trying to find a red one. I'm pulling out everything but red and that's India ink that I have back there. Here's one. Okay, and I want a yellow. Here's a yellow. Okay, I'm holding it up above this because it's still wet. Um, 
Well, I could sit it down, say right there, okay? So always shake your pigments, but you can see that, um, okay, I have alcohol in a spray bottle and I can just spray that on there and then I can drop a color of the alcohol ink on there. And then I can drop the yellow into that. And you'll see how it's going to push away. Actually, I should do it over here so you can actually see what it's doing. See how it's creating? Actually, let's do this. It pushes against the, the, um, the pigment that's already on there. So see how that works? It's really cool. And you can tilt it to get some drips. You can spray alcohol back into it and it creates more crazy stuff. I can do another droplet. And you can see it starts pushing its way out. So if I wanted to put like a purple in there, see what happens with that. This could be something that you could, um, then let dry once you have some sort of pattern you like. A lot of people like to tilt it, but for, the, for, for what you're doing, I'm thinking it would be just really interesting you could have it sit above and then it shines on it by putting a little block of um, foam core and have it sit above your work. Or you could have it flat on the work itself. And you can see that you would see through it and you would have these nebula kind of things. Not that that looks great. You'd have to really think through what you're planning to do. Um, I don't have any of the mask that I told you about, but the resist is basically the same as um, like say you had a prismacolor pencil okay so say i wanted to have some large okay let's do a little better now that is a waxy like a crayon all right so let's say that i want to paint over that and i want to use sort of a blue gray black and I'll use a gouache this time. Um, so you can see what happens is your, your um, waxy crayon is going to resist just like the masking would work. So a, a wax crayon or um, these Prismacolor pencils, those will all work as a resist. And then I'm just looking for a little more. Oh, I got that way too blue. Back to the black. Okay, so this is gouache I'm using now to do the sky. And you can see how I'm sort of going around it just to avoid it because you still have to dab it off because it sits on top. But as it dries, you can actually go back and tap it and you've got your yellow just sitting there underneath waiting for you to rescue it from the paint you know and this is just watercolor so you can wipe it off you can even clean off the brush if you have a fine tip brush and wipe off the paint so that's another technique that you can use so you can use a wax pencil and paint over it with watercolor you can use charcoal um, you know there are all sorts of things that you can do to accomplish it so as I said in our Zoom call, 
There are just endless options for what you can do. See, you can even see it resisting there. Okay, so I'd, I'd be working the sky back out. And, you know, if you don't have a perfect circle there for your star, or, um, I'm just gonna keep working this, um, or the shape that you want, then you just come back in. You'd have to come back in with the wax kind of pencil, or let's see how this would work with charcoal if I came in with charcoal. Ah, oh, there we go. Of course, I'm doing wet charcoal on top of wet, <laughs> wet watercolor, but there. So you would come back in and you could darken it and then carry it out. I should have used the uh, water-soluble graphite and not charcoal, but you get the idea. Okay, I think that's probably enough to give you an idea of what you're trying to do. Um, if you wanted to see, my gouache palette, I can show that to you. You know, and the important thing is don't be afraid to move paint around, you know? I think this thing looped up and you had like red over here. So, you know, you can come in with, I'll do this with the watercolor pencil. And I don't know where that went. I think it went off into space. So um, that was just watercolor pencil. So I can come in. See how that moves so beautifully? And if you wait for everything to dry, you can see you can draw a line into that. So now you're seeing how the watercolor pencil just gets you your basic line and then you can you can keep it really fine you know using a thinner brush would give you really refined lines okay and then you have to decide okay are you going to use your graphite or are you going to go in here with the um you know, the gouache. Um, it's gonna have a very chalky appearance if it's gouache. If you use your straight graphite, let me just show you this. So that's your graphite, water-soluble graphite, okay? So that is going to dry very, very dark. I might have to put a second layer on that, but it can be lightened up by pushing it around, okay? Um, let it set for a minute, but if I were to do gouache, I just want you to see how that's going to dry. It's going to be, um, let it dry here for a second and then you'll see the difference and also We've got some tooth in this um, charcoal. Ah, and I'm pushing up the paper. See what I was talking about? If you start working with wet paper, wet, um, there, so you're gonna get little pieces of the paper peeling up. So you don't wanna draw back into it when it's wet. You'll wreck the paper. So you wanna get it laid down and really let it dry before you try to put on the second layer. I just screwed that up. Um, it's just a sample anyway, but here we go, out into the sky. And you just have to decide how dark you're going to want this to go. And you can just get the first layer down with your either water-soluble graphite or your gouache, and then you can come back in with charcoal on top 
and um, work work it out. Oh, that's still too wet. But you know, go back in to darken it again. But this is where we wanted it the darkest anyway. So I hope that helps you um, work your way through uh, your piece. All right, so that's the beginning anyway. And, um, oh yeah, this is sort of drawing, but it'll show you if you wanted to have a piece on top, what it would look like if you wanted to place that. Of course, I picked up a bunch of the gouache, but you know, if it's placed anywhere on there, it actually looks really cool. If you um, put a white piece of paper behind it, and there are artists who will create their piece on here and raise it about that far, which is like three inches. And it creates a beautiful um, sort of a reflection on the back. Okay, Kevin, I think that's it. Oops, that's it for now. I think that's enough for you. That was really long. I'm sorry, I didn't know I'd go 45 minutes.